Hello everyone, Michael Lombardo here from Life Poured Out International. Our vision is to reach the lost, ignite the church, and serve the poor. This is Awaken Live. Thank you so much for joining and for watching today. You may say, what in the world is going on in the background right now? It doesn't seem like the usual place that you do this. Well, I am in Texas. I went on a road trip um, all the way from New Jersey to Texas. And hold on, let me just make sure this is live before I get into all these details with you guys. So you guys can share this on your public page or on your personal page. All right. For some reason, it puts a privacy setting on. So it looks like we're public now. So you can go ahead and share this. But anyway, so I have a different background because um, I drove from New Jersey to Texas. I ministered in Petersburg, Virginia, saw a beautiful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There was healing. There was prophecy. It was just the now faith that works church family, such a beautiful church family. Um, awesome. And then I stopped, I drove all the way to Houston, Texas to be uh, reunited with my wife and baby. And I preached in on Alaska, Texas. There's just a, a wonderful and sweet move of the spirit that's taking place. It's just North of Houston about an hour or so. And now I'm in San Antonio here with my wife and with, um, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my, my, my wife's side of the family. And I was going to do it at, at, um, my in-law's house, but the, the internet wasn't working. So I'm actually at a church um, in San Antonio right now using their offices. So um, Church of Acts in San Antonio let me use their facility. So I'm encouraged by that. So now we can keep doing Awaken Lives. But um, I'm going to be doing probably one next week and then I'll be traveling. So I'm going to be posting a lot of, you know, the um, older ones. so You guys can stay encouraged by it. And then January and February, it's crazy. It's already booked up. It's packed out with incredible guests. And we're just going to be doing a lot with that going into 2018. It's growing. It's advancing. We're really sharpening a lot of things. So God is really using this outlet. Thank you guys who've been watching. But feel free to comment here at the bottom. I can see your comments. Hey, Anna, how you doing? Heather, Lee, it was good meeting you, bro, in Houston. So you guys can comment here at the bottom. You can share. You can send hearts, send likes, all of that stuff. Um, so it's going to be good. I'm going to get my brother an evangelist, Ryan Bastris, on here. I'm going to get him on because um, we only have about a half an hour, 35 minutes on here today. So I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much more time on anything else. So I'm going to get Ryan on here. Hey, brother. Hey, buddy. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing really good. So I just want to tell everybody um, that's a part of the Awaken Live family. All you guys who are tuning in right now, Ryan Bastris is the first guest that I've had on my show more than one time. And this is actually the third time that he has been on the show. Yes. So that's special, man. I, I feel special, my friend. <laughs> the relationship that we have, I'm honored to have it, my friend. Dude, I love, I love you, man. It's, it's, um, it's an honor to know you. I love what you're doing over there in Pennsylvania, part of Harvest Chapel, and also your traveling ministry. Ryan keeps me, you know, posted about different testimonies, healings, miracles, things that take place, and. I've been watching his live videos. If you're a part of my platform and you don't really know Ryan that well, I encourage you to friend request him or follow him on his public page so you can see he's always posting live videos, right, bro? I was so encouraged yeah. by, by so many of your videos. I appreciate that, man, and encouraged by the ones that you're posting, man. Like I was telling you before we went live, just to see the, the guests uh, that you've had on and uh, the insight that both you and your guests have been giving is phenomenal and it's just neat to see the favor that God has put on your life and the doors that he's opened and the relationships that you're building and the people that you're having on is just hmm. a realization of the favor that you're growing in and, and, and the things that God's doing in your life because in obedience you're sticking to what he's calling you to do man and hmm. uh, shows and uh, so I'm blessed and honored at watching uh, the things uh, that you post either, you know, individually or with your guest, man. It's awesome. So continue so much. this guy out, everybody. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christine, from watching from Maryland. But that's why it's called Awaken Live. My heart is that the church would arise and shine. Yes, there's deep darkness in the world. You know, darkness is covering the people, but the glory of God is to rise upon the church. We're supposed to be a light, a city set in a hill. So my desire is to equip the church, to disciple the church, to see um, an awakening and an ignition take place in our hearts so we can go outside of the four walls. We can reach the lost. We can do it right in the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's just it's beautiful, man. I know that's the same heart that you carry. That's why I've had you on the show so many times. You're, you're a close friend, number one, but I also believe in your ministry. I love your ministry. I love what you're doing. So, um, yeah, man. So 
we were talking a little bit about some testimonies um, yeah. before we got on here. And I love when you text me and you tell me the healings and the, and the cool things that are taking place. And actually, before we do that, I just want to encourage everybody about Immersed Conference. Ryan is going to be um, ministering at, at, during a morning session on Saturday. It's all day Saturday in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. So it's going to be all day Saturday. Um, there's a nine o'clock session with worship and, that, and that's when Ryan's going to be there. So sign up for the conference. It's um, early bird right now pricing until December 20th. So if you want the early bird price, it's actually a really great price. It's like hardly anything. So, you know, it's like, you know, one trip to Chipotle for two people. You know what I mean? If you want to think about it that way, just to have just have an eternal impact on your heart, you know, coming into 2018 with a fresh encounter with the Holy Spirit, with impartation, which is a time of that corporate glory, that corporate anointing. It's going to be amazing. And you got to come out early to see Ryan. He carries such a healing um, breakthrough on his life. He carries the Holy Spirit. He's a prophetic voice. So you're going to want to come out to that. But I'm going to put in the status section, in the comment section, the um, link for Eventbrite. You can just click, reserve your spot by getting your ticket because it's going to fill up fast. Trust me, there's limited space. So we want to talk a little bit about Immerse Conference a little later in the broadcast towards the end. So you got to stick with us. But it's a conference all about encountering the glory of God and encountering the presence of God. And this guy, Ryan Bastris, he carries the glory. He carries the presence of God. I say that, bro, not to I'm not inflating you. I'm not trying to ruffle your feathers at all. Like, literally, I know that about you, man. And you have such a pure heart. It's not about you and your ministry, even though you have a wonderful ministry. It's all about Jesus and lifting him higher. And that's and that's what I love about you, man. Share with us some cool testimonies just to encourage people's hearts of some stuff you've been seeing. I would love to love, love, love. I have a proud son who loves to brag on what his dad's doing. And man, I am seeing God do just before my eyes so many amazing things. And I'm hearing of what God's doing in other people's lives and through people's lives and what he's doing before their eyes. And, and it's amazing. But some of the things that I have been uh, seeing within, you know, I say ministry, but just my life lived for him before people. It's just it's breathtaking and, and it's it's neat because Proverbs chapter nine verse ten says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And one of the things that I believe God is bringing, like restoring back to the body of Christ, is a reverence, a fear, and awe of who He is. Because then we're supposed to then rise up and represent who He is on this earth, so that we can restore the fear of the Lord, the reverence of God, the awe of God back to the church, back to our family, back to our workplace, back to our school. You know, Romans 8, 9, 9 says that, you know, the earth yearns, it craves, it longs for the sons of God to be revealed. And my passion is for God to work in me, but also for him through my surrender to work through me, express himself through me to the people that are around me so that they can be wowed by who God is and the passion that he has for them and what he desires to do in their life. And some of the things that I've been seeing God do in people's lives has been breathtaking for myself, let alone I'm, I'm sure it overwhelms the recipient. And uh, so uh, one of the uh, neat testimonies that uh, I just received recently uh, in the prophetic was a few months ago, I had prophesied over God had given me a prophetic word for a lady at a church that I was speaking at in Pennsylvania. And uh, she came over to me to confirm the prophetic word and, and just to share, you know, how right on it was. And then we prayed into something that uh, was weighing heavy on her heart. And it was about property and I believe a building on that property. And it was time sensitive. And, and the Lord gave me a prophetic word for her that within a short amount of time, I believe it was within a week, that she would receive that financial breakthrough. And how cool would it be if just one person could write the amount that she needed and to make a long story short, a few months you fast forward, she meets me at a church, me and my wife, she meets me at a church that I'm preaching at in West Virginia, drives an hour, about hour and 15 minutes away to meet me, to hear my heart, hear me preach, and to testify of uh, what had happened three days after that prophetic word was given. It was a large amount of money. I won't disclose that or put that on, on, on this live broadcast. Michael knows the amount. It was a significant amount of money that she did, and it was time sensitive. The Lord told her that the part of the prophetic word was within a week. She would receive the finances, and she came to testify that within three days, she received the full amount from one person. And so she received 
a breakthrough and it stirred up hope in the room when they heard that testimony. Revelations 19.10 says it's the testimony of Jesus that's the spirit of prophecy. Right. So we live a life uh, um, testifying who, of who the Father is by allowing him to express himself through us. It really brings prophetic hope in other people's lives. But then those type of testimonies sparks a hope and an expectation in others as well. Um, I mean, I could continue to go on. No, Ryan, real fast, man. Before you share another testimony, I know you've seen healings, awesome stuff. You were in Canada. You were in other parts of the world. But I know there's people that are watching right now that are suffering with lack, that are that are disillusioned, that are discouraged, that almost feel hopeless because of their financial situation. And I just believe, like you said, the spirit, the, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we're prophesying that if God did it for somebody else, he wants to do it for you. And not only that, he accomplished it 2000 years ago in his body, in his life, in his death, in his resurrection. He defeated everything that came in through Adam. He defeated everything that came in through the fall of man. He broke the power of it so it could be under our feet so we could walk in victory in our lives. So the, the good news is. The encouraging news is you don't need to end 2017 or go into 2018 hopeless anymore. You need to be expectant and to have faith in your heart for financial breakthrough in your lives, man. I believe I believe you shared that for a reason. And yeah. just I, I just man, we just prophesy over you right now. If that's you, if you need financial breakthrough in your life, Heather, I know you're watching. If you need financial breakthrough in your life, we just decree and declare that the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it in Jesus name, that he is our shepherd and we shall not lack in the mighty name of Jesus. And he supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So we just speak a breakthrough over your finances. We just eradicate debt in Jesus name. I just rebuke debt right now in Jesus name. And we just speak the abundance of Jesus Christ for his kingdom, for his glory, because he loves us, because he cares, because he delights to give us the kingdom of God, man. If you want to, if you want to pray something into that, go ahead. Let me just encourage everyone who's listening, who might be attaching your faith to what Michael just prayed. One of the things that I believe is significant when we're talking about this and believing and having faith for uh, financial restoration, as well as, you know, for financial or just physical or spiritual increase. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when we're praying and believing for that, we have to always look to Jesus. And I love this because in the Old Testament, they would announce the year of Jubilee with the blowing of the shofar. And it was amazing because those who were in debt were freed of their debts. Those who were in prison were released from prison. And a lot of times our lack, whatever form of lack we're in, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's something against us and it's put us in prison. Yeah. And Jesus is the one. John chapter 8, verse 36, it says, whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. I really believe every time we mention the name of Jesus, Jesus is that announcement of Jubilee. He is uh, the prophetic release into the atmosphere, even just saying the name of Jesus. We don't have to have a long, drawn-out prophetic word. It could just be Jesus being yeah. that prophetic word that we release into the atmosphere to see things shift, to see things change in our lives, where we become free of those things that are against us that have put us in the prison in the first place. I love it how people who had debt were free from debt. Those who were in prison were free from prison. And I really believe when we're living in lack, there's debt against us. And that debt has caused us to be in a prison. And I see God just swinging those doors open and he's right. bidding um, just like he asked Peter to step out of the boat and come to him. I see Jesus on the other side of that jail cell door saying, hey, come and, 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 and come to me, come to me. And I just really feel uh, that. So, Father, we release that. We thank you that Jesus is our jubilee. And every time jubilee was announced with the blowing of the shofar, Father, those that were in debt to someone or something knew they were being free from that debt. Those who were in prison knew they were being released. And there's so much more to Jubilee than that. But there are two specific uh, things that you have just highlighted to me, significant things. So Lord, I thank you. Those who are in prison to the lack that they're in, we thank you for crushing that lack and crushing that prison, Lord, uh, that maybe they've been in because of fear and hesitation and insecurity. I thank you, Lord, that you didn't put them in that prison, but you're leading them out of that prison. You didn't put that debt against them. If anything, 
You sent your son to release us from that debt. So we pray, God, no matter what form of debt people are under, we pray you crush and destroy that debt right now. And we just release increase, increase over their finances, increase in their health, increase in their recovery, increase in their minds right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. Amen. Amen, bro. Financial breakthrough going into 2018 Absolutely. in Jesus' name, bro. And I know you just came back from some traveling not too long ago, and you saw some really cool healings. Can you can you briefly tell us a testimony about that? Share, just share uh, a, a couple. Uh, one of them that was really significant uh, was there was a gentleman who uh, was under just this complete oppression because of pain that he had chronic pain on the uh, left side of his body because of an accident that took tw uh, place 25 years ago. And yeah. he was extreme pain. He was coming to the services that were being held up in, in Canada. And yeah. he was in this extreme pain. And he comes up through the prayer line one night and he actually pulls out a list and gives me a list of the medications that he's been on just to dull the pain. I lay hands on him. A few others lay hands on him. We rebuke that pain. We rebuke that curse. And we just literally seen his face light up within a moment of prayer. And, and, yeah. and, 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 and just a moment of saying Jesus, in a moment of thanking him, <clears throat> we yeah. see this man's face light up. And he looks at me and tears start streaming down his face. And he says that area that had chronic pain uh, is completely hot right now. And he has tears mm -hmm. streaming down his face, Michael. And he says, man... All of this pain that I've had for 25 years is gone. It is yeah. completely gone. And yeah. so, of course, the church erupts and just celebrates his recovery, his breakthrough, his healing. And it just brought faith yeah. room for healing and for breakthrough. <clears throat> the same night, there was a woman who heard me preach, loved what I had to say, but didn't want to stick around for prayer. And mm. so refuses to get prayer so she decides to walk out of the church jump in her car and leave but her car won't start so she comes in thinks it's odd that her car won't start people won't jump her until they get prayer so yeah. she's a little impatient but then someone encourages her to get in the prayer line for us to pray for her. she's yeah. walking up and she gets closer and closer and closer to the front of the line and then she comes to me and she says i've been you know f uh, facing pdsd i have trouble mm -hmm because of the medication that I'm on, because of the PTSD and the anxiety. She says, I've had these tremors for three, three and a half years. And so we started praying for her. And the, and it was crazy because as we were praying for her, she like shocked us. She actually like surprised us with her behavior because she's like, they stopped, they stopped. And I'm like, what, what do you mean? And all the tremors that she's had because of the medication, because of the yeah. PTSD, completely yeah left her body she said she wasn't tremor free awesome for three and a half years bro and she got completely set free that night and awesome. it, it was just amazing and then the last testimony just again of god's healing work and god's healing power is mm. with one service uh we were praying and there was this lady that came up and with childlike faith i just looked to god and i said god i want to see this happen the thing i wanted to see happen was she had a deaf a partially deaf ear she could hear real high noises, but not real soft noises, yeah. especially when there's a lot of noise in the room. Mm. Great for her. It completely broke her free. She got completely healed, and she could hear low and loud tones, and she could <laughs> hear for the first time right mm -hmm. in that ear. Beautiful. Great for someone else who got their healing back in their other ear that was, uh, I don't want to say completely deaf, but it was significantly uh, significant uh, hearing loss. And God completely uh, opened up their ear. And we've just been seeing that, man, because we're having this faith. We're having faith for it. We're believing that what God has done, he desires and has this excitement to do in us. And he has this excitement to do it around us. And yeah. so we just have faith for it, man. We're attacking those things and going after it, man, because we believe that God still wants to do that on this earth because his love never fails. His love doesn't stop. And for people that think, signs, miracles, and wonders died out with the disciples, then that's literally saying God's love that is eternal and never fails has the potential of failing. And that's just us believing a lie. A lie tries to convince us that God actually has the ability to step out and temporarily, temporarily be what he's done. Let me say it this way. A lie is actually a thing that tries to convince us that God has the ability to, to temporarily change who he says he eternally is. Yeah, that's good. He's mm -hmm. the same 
day to day and forever. So what we read in this word is what now, what we read in this story, this conversation with God is something that he actually wants to continue in our That's lives right. and through our lives. Uh, if anything, what we see, especially in the New Testament, what Jesus did, what Peter did, what Paul did, what the other disciples but it should encourage us that this is what God's able to do. This is what God has a passion to do. And the mm-hmm. only way it will die out in us is if we choose not to believe life and believe it's life source. If we believe in it, signs, miracles, and wonders will stay alive in our lives and through our lives. And That's so because it. of that belief in Jesus, man, we've just been seeing crazy miracles and breakthroughs, man. It's just mm. exciting. And it fuels my fire to want to see other people encounter the goodness of God like that. So that's why God wants to restore the all back in the church. Yep. So that we can rise up and restore that all, that fear of God in our families, in our friends, schools, in our workplaces, man, by being a move of God and not just praying for one. That's right. That's right, man. And one thing that really was put on my heart just the past few months, I shared this at City Outpouring. We do we do a monthly worship and prayer gathering in Perth Amboy, New Jersey every month. But I shared just a 10 minute word that was just exploding in my heart. And it was about violent faith. Mm. It's about, you know, it says in Matthew eleven twelve, it says the kingdom of God suffers violence, but violent men or women take the kingdom by force. And, you know, there's a time to just you know, there's a time to just rest in the promises of God. There's a time to just trust and, and rest and just receive. But there's also a time for warfare. There's a time to say, listen, I am not okay with debt. I am not okay with sickness and disease. I am not okay with living below my inheritance in Jesus Christ. And a mantra of mine, a mantra for our ministry, you know, Life Poured Out International is I want everything that Jesus Christ died for me to have. And I, I, don't, I don't want to tolerate anything in my life that Jesus Christ died for me to be free from. I want the full inheritance. I want to see a manifestation of it here and now. And at times when you're seeing a persisting sickness, a persisting problem with your finances, or you're not seeing healing, or you're not seeing breakthrough or growth, or, or something taking place in your life that Jesus promised, there, there's a violent faith. You know, the kingdom on the inside of us is suffering violence, but violent men and women, just like Jesus, he made he made a whip and he went into the temple and he cleansed that temple. He's like, no, this this house is supposed to be for prayer. It's not supposed to be for greed and idolatry He's saying, you know, enough is enough. This is my will and it will be done. You know, and it's the same thing in our lives. We need to say enough is enough. I'm believing big. I'm going to live big. I'm going to dream big and I'm not going to settle. I'm not going to get comfortable. And that's one of the reasons why I entitled this broadcast going deeper because some people, you know, have just been settling for lack. They've been settling for sickness and disease. They've been settling for little fruit in their ministry, or they've been settling for, you know, um, to not use their gifts. A lot of gifts are dormant on the inside of people that God is wanting to awaken. He's wanting to stir up going into 2018. And so I'm just super encouraged by that, man. And I really feel like there's another plug here really fast for those who are watching that the Immersed Conference is really going to be such a powerful, impactful time. If you're in the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, if you're willing to drive, come out. Ryan is going to be there. We've just heard testimony after testimony of God's healing power, of breakthrough. And we're just believing for a fresh encounter, a, a thick, weighty presence and glory of God is going to be there. And in his glory, all of our needs are met. In his glory, we receive everything that we need for life and godliness. So I'm telling you, Immerse Conference is going to be powerful. We, we have Where We Dwell worship team for a blowout encounter service Saturday night. It's going to be a crazy service. It's going to be me, Ryan, Kathy Bixel, my friend Mark Turner, who carries a strong anointing. He's a powerful evangelist. We're going to be doing a time of impartation, prayer, blowout encounter at worship and everything. And then we have all day sessions with myself, prophetess Kathy Bixel, Ryan Bastra. So December 20th is the cutoff date for the early bird. I'm going to put that link at the end of this. You can click on it and reserve your spot today. But bro, you were talking about the fear of the Lord. You know, you were talking about that. And I really, I really love that because I feel like a lot of people don't understand the fear of the Lord. You were talking about this awe, this wonder, you know, this is, you know, we need to go back to that place of just surrender and wonder and awe. And for me, another great definition of the fear of the Lord is honestly like I, you know, when you come to a place, when you encounter his love and you encounter his power to such a degree that you begin to care more about what he thinks, more about what he wants and says, more than what I think or what other people think. You know, there's so many believers, so many Christians, we're so obsessed with what other people think, and we're so, you know, concerned more about my will be done, my kingdom come, 
You know, even as Christians, you know, we can be building our own kingdom. We can care more about our wants and desires. But when you encounter the love of God and when you see his power, when you see him heal people, when you see these amazing things take place, you stand in awe and your heart shifts and changes. You begin to, you know, the fear of the Lord begins to grow in your life. I care more about you, Jesus. I care about more about what you want, what you desire than anything else in my life. It's, it's definitely a place to have this reverence. Uh, for who God is, because he is absolutely marvelous. And one of the things that I've been digesting, I've been praying into is, God, I want to be defeated by your love. You know, the areas that I've been wrestling with, the areas that I've been ignorant to pursue because of fear, hesitation, procrastination, or whatever we want to call it, I believe it all drives back to fear. Um, God, I just want to be overwhelmed and defeated by your fear, by your love, God, to where I'm just in awe of your behavior. I'm in awe of what you've done. And I it, it, then like you're, you're right, because then I start craving for God's behavior, who the father is to take root and to take place and to take action in my life. I love that you reference Jesus taking form in a cord and then going into the temple and flipping tables. And he said, you've made my house uh, a house of the den of thieves, or I'm sorry, you've made my place a den of thieves when it should be a place of prayer. Yeah. And, uh, and automatically we preach it and think that he was talking about the external things. But I really believe what was happening externally was because of what was happening internally. Yeah. And I really believe the greatest way to have a reverence for God uh, mm -hmm. is what the very thing that we're in awe of, we should then want to become. And yeah. I love is when Jesus went in, of course, he did not want people manipulating one another, robbing, stealing, cheating one another, capitalizing on the Passover and marking up prices for the sacrifice. He didn't want any of that. But the reason they were doing those mischievous deeds was because of what was taking place in their lives. Mm -hmm. They allowed themselves to 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 be open to what the enemy was like, kill, steal, and destroy. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. They were a den of thieves. Their heart and their mind was a den for the thief, and he was killing, stealing, and destroying. So what was happening around them was because of what they allowed in them. I say this all the time. Your behavior reflects your biggest influences in life, okay? Yeah. Your behavior reflects your biggest influences in life. Hmm. So whatever was influencing them was then being – was a reflection – of what they were doing and how they conducted business. So when Jesus went in and flipped these tables, of course he didn't have a passion for what was happening externally, but, but, but he didn't have a passion. He, there was no passion found in Christ for what was happening in them internally, but he had a passion to fix and to restore what was happening in them so yep. that changed their behavior and what they did around them and how they conducted right. the business. I love right. this because the disciples then remember in John 2, they remember uh, what was written, the zeal for his house eats him up. When he says, you've made my house a den of thieves rather than a house of prayer, that word house in the Greek actually means you're a people. You're, you're a place that, that, that for the thief, when you should have been a place that, that is devoted to pay, prayer, transformed by God. Yeah. And, and, and so he had a zeal to, for the external change to take place, but he had a passion, a deeper passion for yeah. eternal change. And yeah. I really believe that faith empowers our surrender. And I really believe that surrender creates a, a, a place. It creates a space yeah. for God to move in our lives, not just move around us, but to move in us. Romans Absolutely. chapter 10, verse 17. We know Absolutely. it says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Hebrews chapter 4, 12 talks about how the word is a double-edged sword. And we look at the word sometimes one side, and we allow it to pierce one way. And so I used to take that scripture and be like, yeah, God, like I want to have faith to move mountains. I want to have faith to heal the sick. I want to have faith. So I'm going to digest this word to get the faith that I need to see you work around me. And God says that's only part. That is only part of what I want to do with my word. He says I actually also want my word to empower your thoughts, empower your desire, empower your interests, provoke and prick your heart to where it empowers your faith, where you trust me not just to do a work around you, but my word gives you a faith to surrender so that I can do a work in you. Mm -hmm. I love this because when Mary surrendered and said, okay, let it be according to your word, O oh God, that was when Holy Spirit was able to come in and conceive in her what only Holy Spirit could conceive. Yeah. And yeah. I love 
Because before she birthed the miracle, she had to conceive the miracle. And I believe before we see miracles take place in us, there needs to be a miracle, a transformation, a continuing, a continuous like, like, like transformation that takes place in us because we surrender to God and let him do it in us that then empowers and encourages our faith and our desire and our passion to see it done around us. Surrender allows God to do it in us and then surrender get, allows God to do it through us and it both takes faith. And I love this because the angel even said, what is conceived of you is of the Holy Spirit. And it was Jesus. And I don't know about you all, but I want Jesus to be conceived in me because I want him to express himself through all of my behaviors. Jesus says, you'll know by the fruit they bear. When we surrender, we're allowing Holy Spirit to work out things in us so that we can bear fruit on us that, that, that others see. That's it. Amazing because uh, it's it's neat because when we live a life where we're bearing fruit, then guess what? We don't have to sell our produce. People are going to desire to come and pluck it, you know, pluck it off of our tree, you know, so as they see the transformation that's taking place in our lives. And the the deeper that God works in us is the deeper he'll work around us. Look at how mischievous they were in the temple because of the condition of their temple, their heart and their mind. That's good. Reproduces after its own kind. Holy Spirit came upon Mary and put a seed in her, and that seed was Jesus, right? And 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 I say it this way: for us to carry what Mary carried, we have to do what Mary did, and that's surrender. But when we surrender and we then say, "I can only do what I see my Father do," that I believe is a d- great definition of worship. When we yep. say, "I want to do what I see in you," so Absolutely. do it in me, so you can express yourself through me. Worship Bro, that's really, surrendered life. It's really important, man. I want to, I think that God's even, I want to encourage people right now because the Lord, he cares more. I want you to hear this. The Lord, he cares more about the condition of your heart than the work of your hands. Yeah. He cares more about forming Christ in you. He cares more about conforming you to the very image and likeness of Christ than he does about manifesting his miracle working power through you. See, when when God wanted to liberate the Israelites from Egyptian bondage, he took them through the wilderness to get yeah. to the promised land before he let them inherit, you know, the blessings, you know, the land flowing with milk and honey before he brought them to that place of abundance. The wilderness was a place where they learned how to worship. Just like Moses told Pharaoh, he said, let my people go into the wilderness so that they may worship their God. The Lord wanted them to know him. The Lord wanted them to learn how to trust him and know him intimately. He wanted to do a work in their hearts before he ushered them and empowered them and manifested his power to bring them into the land of promise. And I even feel that there's so many people here. You feel like 2017 was rough. You feel like it was a wilderness season. You feel like you've just been in the furnace, in the fire. And I want to tell you that he's doing something eternal on the inside of you so he could manifest something powerful and eternal through you. So he's doing an inward work so that there could be a manifestation of an outward work in your life. So he cares about the promises of God on your life, but he also cares about the condition of your heart. Are you able to carry the blessings? Are you able to go into um, the promise of God with strength, with dignity, with power, so you don't crumble under the weight of everything that takes place in your lives? And let me, let me tell you this, that wilderness seasons, okay, Wilderness has nothing to do with God being far away, you know, the heavens being brass, you know, feeling dry and broken and barren. OK, now, and I know a lot of people feel that way in, in times where we coin them wilderness seasons. But wilderness, biblically, biblically, excuse me, you know, um, we look back to the Israelites in the wilderness and w- the wilderness season was a time of miracles for the Israelites. It was a place where miracles were born. It was a place where God revealed himself to the Israelites. He showed them his nature. He showed them his ways. So it, it may have seemed barren for them, but there was, a, there was, come on, there was a fire by night and there was a cloud by day leading them. So the wilderness is a place of being led by the Lord in a, in a very special, tangible way. And also he fed them with supernatural manna. He fed them with quail. It was a place of divine provision that they learned how to trust God for his provision, not in their own strength and abilities. God protected them. He opened up the uh, the Red Sea and he delivered them from their enemies. It was a place of deliverance and protection. And there's so many more things we can talk about. So the wilderness isn't a place where, you know, where miracles are absent. It's a place where miracles are born. And what so, I, what I, 
man, just value what God's doing. Just value what God did with you in 2017 and just be ready for breakthrough, for accessing the promised land going into 2018. So, so your faith could be, it could be strong in that place. And, and that well, man, because when David is standing in front of Goliath, even he references, he remembers what God did for him. And within himself, he praised God. He adored mm -hmm. God and it empowered him to confront what he was about. It gave him the power, it gave him the encouragement, it gave him the strength that motivated him to confront Goliath. And sometimes, you know, when we're faced with a big task or we're faced with something overwhelming, God wants us to get to a place where we're so overwhelmed by him, so in awe of him, that those things that aren't of him pale in comparison to being, being in awe of who he is. And, and that's what praise does. Praise gives your perspective an upgrade. I love this because in the wilderness, God revealed to them who he was to empower them to say, this is what you're supposed to look like. This is yeah. what to walk out. I love this because God showed them what they should praise and adore. But then I love this because uh, worship, I believe, is becoming what you adore. And yeah. we praise God. We thank him for who he is. But guess what? Worship is a place of surrender and saying, God, all of who you are, I don't want to just have faith that you're going to show up in that way externally. I need you to show up in my life physically, uh, internally, in my heart, in my mind. Change me from the inside out. You know, let me be like Jesus. I love this because Jesus defined pure worship. Uh, uh, and we, we miss it sometimes in the Gospel of John. He says, well, um, the son can only do what he sees his father do. And then he says that if you've seen me, you've seen the father. I love what was prophesied of Christ before he was even born. He will be Emmanuel, God with us. So that was literally wherever Jesus was, it was as if God himself was there. I want to be so overwhelmed by God, so surrendered to who he is, where I'm not just having faith for what he's going to do around me, but I'm like, God, do that work in me because I want to look like that. I want to mm -hmm. represent that. I want to become that kind of crazy, reckless, radical love. I, I want to see you provide for me, but I want to rise up and be obedient and provide for others because I'm so blessed. I need to be a blessing. But yeah. I love this because Mary carried Jesus, but she had to first surrender to God to carry what she carried. And when we surrender to God, it actually gives him the opportunity to do a work in us so that we, like Mary, can be the one that carries and represents Christ here on this earth. We're ambassador, ambassadors of heaven, ambassadors, uh, representatives of Jesus, so that wherever we are, it's as if Jesus is there. It's right. as if like, Jesus was there, which means... If I'm in a tough situation, uh, I'm handling it the way Christ would handle it because Christ has already laid a hold of me in that particular area of my life, did a work in me so that I have a healthy response with what's taking place around me. Yeah. I don't act, but I respond because the way I respond has been forged and conditioned in prayer to the Father. He's done a work in me, and then it's times like this that he expresses himself through me. Yeah. And so God's been really stretching me and challenging me with this kind of revelation. I want to have faith to see the deaf ears open and see people get free of pain that they've been under for 25 years. But you know what? There's been a time where I've seen God do so much around me, but I went home and nothing was being done in me. And I confirmed my identity based off of my gifting and what I've seen God do based off of my gifting. But then God showed me that gifts are without repentance, but fruit is because of repentance and the fruit of the spirit is born when you are allowing holy spirit to conceive something in you and change everything about you to look like christ yeah and i love this because i would go home seeing all these miracles and feel validated that man i must be someone in the kingdom because look what god's doing around me and god's like ryan he says it is about what i do in you the transformation of your heart the transformation of your mind so that no matter what you're up against you're mm. standing like a palm tree you might bend a little bit but you're not taking off of your foundation you're not yeah. i love this because when when god gave joshua instructions before he went into the promised land he said meditate on the book of the law day and night you know observe it do all that's written in it don't depart from it right there's mm -hmm. so many angles i could preach this verse but then he says then you'll prosper and have good success you know what yeah. i mean it wasn't, you know, it, it was about the work that took place in him first, 
before he ever seen the work take place around him. Mary right. had to have the miracle take place in her before she brought a birthing to the miracle that then saved the world. She had yeah. to surrender for a miracle to take place in her. Yeah. And because she allowed God to do a miracle in her, the yeah. deeper God works in you, the deeper he works around you. So it's neat because when she allowed Christ to be formed in her, she then, through obedience and surrender, allowed him to be birthed through her, right? And guess what? People were rocked and people were saved for generations to Absolutely. come. A woman is pregnant. Complete transformations take place. Uh, her weight, her, her attitude, her interests, her cravings. Can I tell you something? I want my interest, my figure, my whole life change because yes. what's been conceived of the Holy Spirit in me to where I start bearing fruit. That's what it well, looks like to be pregnant with Jesus. It's <laughs> bearing fruit. You know? <laughs> so Ryan, I know, bro, I know it's already like past 140 and I know you got to run, but I want you to release a prayer. I want you to pray for people ending 2017, going into 2018. They're craving and they're hungry for the very thing that me and you have been talking about on this broadcast. Just just pray, bro, and just release the yeah. anointing if you feel led. That I hear for the people that are watching and the people that will watch uh, leading into 2018 is Isaiah 54 verse 2. It's Isaiah 54 verse 2 and it says this, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling, uh, of your dwellings. Do not spare lengthening your cords and strengthening your stakes. I believe this yeah. is a that God's expanding our tent pegs. I love this because this message is spoken, okay, to a people who are oppressed, a people who, be, because of the curse, they're shamed and their uh, uh, their barrenness, you know, has overtaken them to a place of oppression and depression. Yeah. And God is giving them a, a covenant of peace that he wants to release on their land. And he's literally saying in verse two, enlarge the place of your tent. He's like, listen, I'm completely breaking this barrenness. I'm completely breaking this shame so that you are free to operate in what you, you felt limited and restricted by. And that's what I want to pray into. I want yeah, to pray ahead, that whatever restriction, mm -hmm. if it's fear, hesitation, insecurity, selfishness, that that would be broken. That shame would be broken. Barrenness would be broken in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus yeah. so that you can see an right. enlargement and an increase. So, Father, I pray right now that prophetic word. I pray for an enlargement. I pray, God, for increase. I thank you because of Jesus because of Jesus, he came to break shame. He, he came to break barrenness. And Father, let us never want an increase in bank account before we want an increase in our heart and mind. That's right. Before fashioned by the refiner, you, God. So refine our hearts, refine our minds, refine us, God, so that no matter what it looks like, we stand anticipating and expecting and excited to see a move of you, God. But Father, I then pray that you do just break off any barrenness, any shame that's in people's lives. And I thank you. And we release enlargement of territory and increase right now and expanding of tent pegs going into 2018. I believe Isaiah 54 verse 2 is one of many prophetic scriptures that God is using for 2018. So God, let it be so. Break that shame, break that barrenness, and the areas where they weren't bearing God. I thank you that you're bringing healing, you're bringing life, and they're going to start bearing, and they're going to see an enlargement, and they're going to see an increase. Things that have been oppressed by fear, been held hostage by restriction because of that fear, we break that fear right now. We remove that restriction because of the zeal that we have that eats us up now, the same zeal that Jesus had to remove the restrictions in the temple. God, we thank you that you're removing limitations and restriction and taking care of barrenness. And I thank you, God in heaven, that they will see an enlargement and an increase, not just because of what you're going to do, God, but the faith they're going to have to step up and do something. Because, Lord, you want us to have faith to move mountains. And sometimes that mountain that needs to move is us. So by faith, may we become a movement, God. May we move and not be the mountain and restrict ourselves, but may we fully surrender to you and let you have your way in us and through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, bro. Amen. So thank you so much for pouring out. Thank you so much for joining me, man. I love you, bro. I believe in you. And Let me just, uh, let me just challenge you with this, man. I, I don't want to restrict God with time. But let me just say this really quick. 
I believe those who, who have been experiencing a barrenness and a shame that comes with it, because in the Old Testament, the culture of that day, you know, barrenness was a shame. You know what I mean? I believe God's just breaking that. And the things that you've been wanting to see production and things that you've been wanting to see increase, the things that you want to be seeing life in, that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to bring life. And I believe that God says this is a year where we expand our territory by doing more. I love this because he tells Joshua, wherever your feet go, that's the land that I've given you. Can I tell you something? A lot of times we need faith to move mountains, and that mountain is us, our stubbornness, our selfishness, our fear. I just see God breaking that fear off. Yeah, he is. Doing what you've never done before in faith because of the work that's taking place in you, where you're going to start seeing things you've never seen before. So Absolutely. Let- Bless that and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. There is literally, like you're talking about, the fear of the Lord. The Lord is, he's restoring the fear of the Lord in the church, a high reverence, a high honor, and awe of who he is. You know, people who care more about him, his thoughts, his desires, you know, what's what's in his heart and what's in our heart and what other people say and what, what other people think. And I just, I thank you, Lord. You're restoring that fear of the Lord in the church, but you're also giving us a, a Insatiable, just this this hunger for the things of God, not to settle, not to compromise, not to be content with less than what you've bought for us, Jesus. But I just even, man, there's just a, there's a hunger and there's a there's a holy tenacity rising up in God's people going into 2018. I just bless you guys. What Ryan said was spot on, and I just believe that you know what is behind you is behind you, and you're marching forward with fresh focus. You're, you're marching forward with increased faith in Jesus name. And also just like, not just a, not just a faith, which is, which is a rest, which a lot of you need. You know, if you've, you've been striving, you need to enter into that rest. You need to come out of your own works and enter into his works. But there is this also, there's this fighting faith that takes place in our lives. Do not settle. Do not settle. What's behind you. There's so much more ahead of you. We go from glory to glory. We go from faith to faith, from strength to strength. We're always increasing in the kingdom of God. And I want to bless you with that. Even if God did amazing things, 2017, man, it was overflow. It was fruitful. I want you to know that there is more for you in 2018. Keep your expectations high. Do not camp out where you were and say, that's good. I'm cool with just this. He's always going to be stretching you. He's always going to be making you uncomfortable. God is right outside of your comfort zone. The the will of God and the kingdom of God is just waiting for you right outside of your comfort zone. You got to stretch yourself in that. And and the last thing I'll say, and then I do have to go is, is, is we don't have success in what we obtain, like what we have that could be here today and gone tomorrow. Our success uh, isn't what we believe for. It's who we believe in. That's right. That's what that's what I believe we're really trying to get across here. And I love this because your surrender in this season, like never before, like Mary, according to your word, let it be so like Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. You're actually creating more space for God to do the very thing that you're craving. And that's right. more. And so I really believe there's more to possess. But what you have to do is you need to allow a word of God to possess your heart and prick you where you repent. And you stand into a place of realizing what God has for you, and you go take it by force. You go take it by faith, and then you also go and operate in it by faith as well. Your success is not based on what you have. Your success, I believe, is based on who you believe, especially in your greatest forms of lack. So continue. Believe in Jesus, continue to surrender to God. And when you continue to do that, God works deeper in you where you now have a stronger, more radical, reckless faith for what God's going to do around you. Bless you. Amen, bro. So, Ryan, he's joining me January 20th, immersed conference. You need to go ahead and reserve your spot now while the early bird rate is there. December 20th, it ends. You can still sign up after that. You need to reserve your spot, limited spots. But um, right now you can get that early bird pricing. So, Ryan, I love you, man of God. Let's talk soon, all right? I know you got to run. Yeah, man. Bless you, buddy. Bless you. See you later. Hey, sign up for the conference. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of powerful words, my friends. Sign up today. All right. Mm -hmm. Bless you, bro. Bless you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. So.
I'm again, I'm going to say it. Immersed conference, January 20th. Our heart is to encounter the glory of God going into 2018 with fresh perspective, with impartation, with um, just encounters with his glory. There's going to be amazing worship teams, the faith culture worship band, the city outpouring worship band. Man, our last city outpouring worship gathering was incredible. There was such a thick presence. The Holy Spirit had his way. He just had his way and we let him have his way. And it just put my expectations so high for what God is going to do here at the Immersed Conference. So we're going to have faith culture. We're going to have city outpouring. But we're also going to have a worship collective uh, where we dwell worship. Um, people from different teams, resting place in New Jersey, but they're going to come together where we do our worship and they're just going to release the sound of heaven. They're going to release the sweet fragrance of heaven and we're going to encounter God like never before. Saturday night is an encounter service with where we dwell and we're going to have impartation with me, Ryan Bastris, Kathy Bixel, Mark Turner. Um, it's going to be amazing. So me, Ryan, Kathy Bixel, she's a prophetess. She, a powerful move of the spirit operates through her. And also Mark Turner, a traveling evangelist. He preaches crusades all over the world. And man, that guy, he does not hold back whatsoever. So um, you need to come. It's going to be life changing. It's going to just ignite you for the beginning of the year going into 2018. I know there's going to be dramatic life changing encounters that take place. So as soon as this video is over, I'm going to put in the status section, the link for Immersed Conference 2018. January 20th. It's Saturday all day and night. And I'm going to put it in the status section. And um, also we're doing an immersed conference in March in Dallas, Texas. Okay. At Christ for the Nations Institute. We have amazing people joining us for that conference too. So you, you'll follow us on social media, like my ministry page, because I've come to a limit on my um, personal page with friends. Okay. So you need to start following my ministry page all those who are friends right now on my personal page, go ahead and like my ministry page. I'll be posting a lot more on there because I want to bless a larger audience of people. So as you do that, you'll find out more about different immersed conferences that we're doing. We're going to do one in Virginia in the summertime. And if you want to host an immersed conference in your city, your church, contact me at lifeportoutintl at gmail.com. Or you can private message me on Facebook and I'll get back to you because we want to do these in several locations all around the U.S. So it's a conference centered around encountering the glory of God because when you encounter him, you are never the same. Chains break off, financial burdens break off, increase, um, pro prophecy, healing. Life is completely transformed in the very glory and presence of God. So sign up today to get the early bird price. Sign up today to get your spot reserved. Again, the link will be in the status in the comment section. And on my book, Immersed in His Glory, a supernatural guide to experiencing the presence of God, supernatural guide to abiding in the presence of God. It's not released until January 16th, but you can pre-order on my website and I'm going to sign and I'm going to put a prophetic encouragement with the first 30, first 50, excuse me, pre-orders on my website. Okay, so if you go to my website, I'll put that link also in the status and comments. I will put a prophetic encouragement. I will sign the first 50 copies that go out, and it's at a discounted price right now. Also, if you like Kindle better, you can go on Amazon, and it's actually Kindle is giving a free sample chapter right now, a free portion of my book. So you could read it. You can find out if you want to purchase it. You can get it on Amazon, wherever books are sold. January 16th, but you could also get it on my website. And I'll get it to you before the release date of January 16th. So immersed in his glory, a supernatural guide to abiding and experiencing God's presence, endorsed by Heidi Baker, Matt Sorger, David T. DeMola, Roberts Lairdon, just amazing people. Brian Simmons wrote the forward. So love you guys. Sign up for Immersed Conference. Get a copy of Immersed Book. And also, I've got uh, five hours of teaching on a USB drive. It's on my website. It's also on my Facebook ministry page. You can click on it to get to Shopify. But it's five hours of teaching on the Holy Spirit, okay? And you can put it in your computer, and you can give it to several different people. You can load it on several computers, or you can put it into your car if you have a USB port, and you can listen to it. Five hours of Holy Spirit teaching. So you want want to grab hold of that as well. Love you guys. Check out our website. I have um, Awaken Live archives now on my website and on YouTube. So you can find out, you know, you can watch Cindy Trim, Robert Lairdon, Brian Simmons, you know, all the different, you know, you know, Mar Margie Florent, you could watch this one soon, Mark Matt Sorger. So, you know, you could listen to them whenever you want. You can go through them, be encouraged by them, blessed by them. You hear that bell? I'm at a school right now, I'm at a church. But anyway, I love you guys. Bless you guys. Next week, I'm going to have another guest, but then I'll be traveling. So I'll be posting 
um, previous Awaken Live shows. You could watch them, be encouraged by them. And in January, we're going to have Darren Wilson from Fury's Love, um, you know, the filmmaker of Fury's Love, Finger of God, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost Reborn, you know, WPTV and all of that. And we're going to have just awesome people. Already January and February is packed out. So we're believing God for bigger things in 2018. Love you guys. You're amazing. We'll talk soon.